Hi, my name's Dan, and in this video I'm going to go over the new features for the Bookstack October 2024 release. Now this release has been focused on building a new WYSIWYG editor, and that's why this has taken quite a while since the last release, which was back in May. But there are a few other little goodies added into this release too, just to ensure there is something new here. Now talking about the new editor, this can be enabled as a site default by going to the default page editor option, which applies for any new pages that are created. And in this drop down, we can see there's a new option, the new WYSIWYG in alpha testing. And this is a very early alpha preview, essentially, of this new editor, which we'll come on to a second. Alternatively, if your user account has the permissions to change the page editor type, then you can jump to this new editor for a particular page via the editor itself. So for example, this page here, if I go to edit, and then in the draft menu up here, I can go switch to new WYSIWYG and then accept the warning. And then we jumped into the new WYSIWYG editor here. So you may be looking at this thinking it doesn't really look new. It looks very similar to the existing WYSIWYG editor. And you'd be correct because that's the primary goal that we've got here. So exactly match the existing editor as close as possible to allow a smooth and familiar switch over. But under the hood, the editor is built completely differently. So previously we were using the project Tiny MCE for the existing WYSIWYG editor. And we're moving on from that due to licensing changes within that project and to switch on to maybe a more modern base that we'll be able to grow into the future with. So with this editor all the UI controls like all the formatting options the buttons the little UI elements all of that is completely custom built and within our control and the editor engine itself is based upon lexical and this is a project from meta or Facebook although quite late into the life cycle of building this editor I have ended up forking lexical or at least the main components that we're using in this new editor due to some fundamental design decisions that I couldn't easily just override using the library so there's now essentially a fork of this within bookstag and we've also got full control over the underlying editor engine as well. So this means a lot more maintenance, a lot more code and responsibility on our side, but this is a very core piece of Bookstack. So that extra control and access may allow us to do some more interesting things and be able to fix things much easier going forward at the cost of likely more effort. We'll have to see how that balance works out over time. But anyway, looking at the editor itself, again, everything should be very familiar. I've tried to replicate things as close as possible. So we've got all the same controls. At this point, all the main content blocks exist. So we've got all the same header options, the call out options, same inline formatting options, list options, and all the extra blocks like tables, code blocks, draw.io integration, media embedding. All those core features are included, but this will be in a buggy state. There's lots of little edge cases. There's lots of little usability things. So overall, I wouldn't advise this being used in a production capacity. This is really only included at this stage for alpha level testing. And that's just so we can get some feedback. So I've opened an issue on GitHub here, issue number 5245, where I'm planning to record and list all the feedback that we get over this next release cycle. And these can be things that I can focus and work on to then improve it into the next release. And the idea is, is that eventually it will stabilize before we make it like a beta release. And then once that's gone through some extra testing, then we can put that as the default editor instead of the the existing tiny MCE based WYSIWYG editor and then quite a while in the future we'll eventually remove that existing editor leaving just this one plus our existing markdown editor so it's really important to me that this transition is a stable process that's fairly well controlled and tested to avoid affecting 99% of main use cases of Bookstack. But one major thing that is missing for this release is mobile support. It's currently really only focused on desktop usability as mobile support is gonna be something that I'm gonna focus on for the next feature release. Again, whether it's still in alpha or beta state. So next up is search term negation. Now I've got a search going on here in my instance for the word cat. And we can see I've got 16 results here. But let's say I wanted to filter some of these items out of the search results. Currently, you could only really do that on a positive match. So using another search term to search for a specific tag or specific content. But there's no way to say, for example, search cat where it doesn't have a word or doesn't have a tag. But now those things are possible. For example, I can see here, there looks like a template page there. So we can filter in templates with is template, at least for pages. We can filter out page templates using a minus in front of the is template search filter. So if I press enter and then that remove that result and takes us down to 15. But let's say I also don't want any content that has the text adoption in it. I can do minus and then an exact search term for adoption. Hit enter and that filters those out to 11 results. So you've got these results, but I can see here I've got some results with the tag category. So let's filter those out as well. 
So again, a minus and then the tag search syntax, and then that filters them out of the search results as well. So it should be noted the minus doesn't work for normal search terms because there's some ambiguity in terms of the syntax and what is expected there because they match a little bit differently on terms of scoring and things like that but as shown there they work on exact terms tags and filters and then within the actual search ui of the main search page you won't have any specific ui support for them in this area but you can still use all these ui features and your negative tags will still remain and now onto new code languages supported we now have r code and sas code language support within code blocks so when you're editing inserting code blocks they will now get proper syntax highlighting for the R and SAS code languages. And now another search related feature, we now support open search. And when I say open search, I don't mean the Amazon fork of the Elastic Search project. This is a browser based standard that allows you to integrate an application search with the browser in various ways. And ultimately how that presents is up to the browser, but I'll show you how that looks in Firefox here. So I'm in my Bookstack instance right now. And if I go into the URL bar down in my search options here, where it says this time search with, I've got a new option here. It's my little bookstack icon with a little plus and hovering over that is states add search engine bookstack. So I can just simply click that. And now this bookstack instance is added to my list of search engines. So now in Firefox, even when I'm on a completely different website, I can go to the URL bar, search cat, for example, and I can click to search that via bookstack and then hit enter. And then that searches my Bookstack instance. So a nice, easy way to access the search of my Bookstack instance from anywhere in my browser. And a big thanks to Maximilian Walter here for contributing this feature. And now a quick note about PDF exporting. In the last release, we added a export PDF command that allows you to find a custom command that handles the conversion of HTML to PDF for PDF exports. This had a default timeout of 15 seconds to make sure Bookstack wasn't stuck rendering a PDF for too long. But this could be a bit limiting in some scenarios where maybe you're exporting massive books. So now the timeout has been made configurable as well by this export PDF command timeout option. And now for a little usability improvement, quite often in a new Bookstack instance, the first time that an email is sent is when a new user is being added and this checkbox is checked, which is send user invite email. And since this was the first time an email is often sent, it's also the first time that email based errors may occur. So a common scenario would be that a admin has set up the instance and not configured good email sending at all and then they go to invite a new user but then this fails and typically when you save this new user that would just show a generic an error has occurred screen which would result in the admin having to then scroll through the application log to try and find out what's going wrong to understand that that's email based so now we've just added a little bit more handling around this specific scenario so if you try and do this with invalid email settings you'll now get an error like this, could not create user since invite email failed to send. So this should help the admin understand exactly what's going on under the hood without having to hunt through logs. So they can jump right into fixing the email or alternatively, they could remain on this form now and then just decide to set user password instead. And then lastly, on to translations where we have a new language made available in Bookstack and that is Welsh. So that's now available within the language select option menu for your profile. And with that active, you will see everything in the Welsh language. So a big thank you to Kate Barber, who looking at the activity log has seemed to have pretty much done all the translation for Welsh since the start of the year. And they've been continuously developing that up until the point where it's now ready. And then also a big thanks to everyone listed here that's contributed to the Bookstack translations since the last feature release. So that's it in terms of significant new features within the October release. In terms of next steps, I'll probably be focusing on maturing that new editor. And as part of that, working on all of the issues that get raised up by by new people being able to test that new editor. But upon that, I am becoming aware that there's been very few new big features this year, as we've had to spend a lot of effort on maintaining existing functionality or working on what are essentially like for like replacements like the new editor. So I would like to pick just one feature that's been fairly highly requested by the community and then focus on that also. Otherwise, I hope you like the look of the new features that have been added in this release. I wish you a smooth upgrade and I hope you have a wonderful day.